Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. First time in Saudi Arabia. I'm loving it. Thanks, thanks for welcoming me. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the brain, your brains, and about the new technologies that are being developed to deal with your brain. And what are the ethical consequences of tapping into the brain? So let's take a look at the future. So how does this song make you feel? Pretty sad, right? This is a sad song. What about if I tell you this is the sound of a brain suffering from depression? So when your brain is depressed, your right hemisphere, your frontal lobe on the right side has less activity than the left side. We call this frontal asymmetry. What does that mean? the electrical connections in your brain are distorted. And that's why I created this sad sound. You know, this, the brain is not communicating in a happy way. Something is wrong in the brain. So at my company, we have been obsessed with the code in the brain. Now that you're listening to me, there are 100 billion neurons communicating at 240 miles per hour, more than a jet. And we don't know how the brain works. So what we have been doing is working with this technology. And in all the pictures, you see me with this. But I have hair. You know, it looks like I don't have hair. But so this that I'm wearing, this is a technology. As you can see, it's plenty of electrodes. Because your brain is electric as your heart, I can pick up your electrical signals in the brain, but I can use any of the electrodes to stimulate the brain. So remember the very bad press electroshocks. So let's think of these of very, very small electroshocks that they don't hurt, but they can rewire your brain. They can bring excitation or inhibition to your brain. In the Roman times, the Egyptians, they were taking fish from the river, electric fish, and putting them into their brain. They thought they could deal with pain. So the concept of electricity in the brain has been happening for a very long time. So before I get into what we do with this technology, let's think about what makes any of you humans. I think the brain is what really defines us as humans. There is a lot of literature about evolving brains, how technology is making us evolve as humans. So let's think of the future. If we think of brain-computer interfaces, today you can see paralyzed people. This lady on the right or this gentleman, they are paralyzed. They cannot move. But if we put an electrode in their brain and we record their brain signals, they can move a robotic arm. This is called brain-computer interfaces, and you can use it to control machines, which is a pretty interesting thing. For the deaf people, we are implanted technology so they can hear. You can maybe become smarter or enhance your life. And of course, if you suffer from Parkinson today, they will open your scalp, inject an electrode, and you will stop uh, tremoring. So to make it short, I think that technologies, we are going to see more and more technologies in the brain. And of course, Mr. Elon Musk and Neuralink is a new player in the field, developing these new brain-computer interfaces. So what is going to happen in the future with all these technologies? I think it's a question, especially for the young people, would you let anybody put a chip into your brain? So we made an experiment years ago between a person in India and a person in Barcelona, and we could connect two brains trying to uh, transfer information. But I think there is a lot of ethical debates about brain-to-brain -brain communication. So 
I will ask the audience, if you could use my technology or another technology to read and write in the brain, what would you do? Would you go to science fiction? And would you just become smarter, go to the matrix, replay memories, live in another body, right? So those are some of the things that humanity has been looking for for a long time. So if I wear my cap right now, let me wear it. This is what you can see. We could collect your brain signals like that, and we can use that information to control a computer. But what I am most interested in about is, can we help your brain to heal? So imagine the red area is an area of your brain that is super excited. And you know what happens? You can have seizures. You can have epilepsy. What about if I can inject negative currents into the brain so I can stop the seizures? Isn't it beautiful? I mean, besides becoming smarter or being in the matrix, can we use this technology for diseases? So this is what we are doing at the company. We are working with epileptic children, and my company is based both in Boston and in Barcelona. And this is what we did. We asked the neurologist to tell us, in these children, where the seizures were coming from. So based on an MRI, based on an EEG, the doctor will say, the seizures are coming from here. This area of the brain, it's super excited. And then we will build a 3D model of the brain of that patient and stimulate that area of the brain with negative current. It's pretty awesome that we can model the brain and inject currents anywhere. So with this protocol that then people can use it in their home, we reduce seizures 47%. It's pretty amazing because these children, the alternative is surgery. They don't respond to medication. They take meds and they have seizures. So the FDA gave us breakthrough designation and now we are doing 200 patients in 20 hospitals in the US and we aim to become the first company to create this therapy. So for the entrepreneurs in the room, this is the beauty of being an entrepreneur. You think something in the lab, you think something in your company, and now you're at the doorstep of making impact in millions of patients around the globe. But we are not stopping in um, epilepsy. We are also working with the FDA in depression. I think depression is a huge problem, mental health in our society, especially after the pandemic. And we are also working on Alzheimer's. You all will age, will become older. So can we help you with the stimulation? Maybe not to lose your memory so much, for example. Anyway, in the future, these technologies will be used at home. So the doctor will prescribe you 20 minutes of this stimulation. And you can do it in your home without anybody realizing or going to the hospital. And the future, my co-founder is a physicist and mathematician. We want to be like the flight simulators. We want to simulate your brain on the cloud. And for that, we are building neuro twins or digital copies of the brain. So we know where to stimulate and how your brain will react to a treatment. So imagine having your brain copy on the cloud and simulate uh, how to treat your Alzheimer's, your depression on the cloud. So this is what we are doing to personalize therapy. So for the second part of my talk between, you know, after the neuro twins, um, I want to talk about the ethical issues. I thought that because I was running a medical device company with a very cool technology, I was taking care of all the ethical issues. So. I think that when you think of patients, you know, in epilepsy, in Alzheimer's, in depression, you have to think of how are you protecting the patients, right? And this is the definition of what we call neuroethics. So I have participated in many events across the world on neuroethics, and there are some fundamental questions that we should be asking on neuroethics. Even though I am the watch of the FDA, I'm a medical device manufacturer, I have a lot of regulation in the company, 
there are a few questions that I should ask myself. So, what is the impact of my technology in society? Is it going to be for the rich to become smarter? Is it going to change what it means to be human? If I stimulate you, can I change your mind? Can I change your decision making? Um, can I reduce your autonomy, your identity? Will you feel like a different person when you have a brain chip in your brain? So these are very important questions that I never asked myself before I met neuroethicists. And I think that as a company, as Neuroelectrics, we have to care about responsibility, data privacy, what am I going to do with the brain data, identity and equity. So when Elon Musk or any other company or my company will offer to you and it's going to come a chip implanted into your brain or a brain interface, you have to think about this. What are they going to do with your data? Is it going to change your autonomy or your identity? And you know, should governments be involved? So these are very important questions that I think we need to respond today because the technology is advancing at great speed. So I think my company chose to be medical and I think that's what the entrepreneurial responsibility is. We have the responsibility to decide where to take our companies. But you will see this consumer revolution, devices to make you smarter, learn faster, increase your memory. So be aware that I think this is coming for brain health in no short time. So I think we need to be responsible, we need guidelines. And um, you know, it, this is a big shout for, for the women in the room. My company, we are over 100 people with offices in the US and in Europe, and we are really scaling in the world. But I have more than 40% women in the team. Um, engineers, uh, electronic engineers, uh, um, software engineers, physicists, mathematicians, data analysts. So I really encourage the men and the women out there to really inspire your girls to study science and technology because I think that as a woman in tech, we need more diversity. You know, there are not many women CEOs in the tech world and we need, you know, more women, more diversity in general. So I also have four kids. So don't let anybody lie that you cannot have a successful career and have a family. I think I'm a good mother. Maybe my nails are not super polished, but for the rest, I think I can cope. Um, I received Goldman Sachs Entrepreneur of the Year in New York a couple of months ago. So my career is really strong, but <laughs> thank you. But I still love my kids and I care deeply about my family. So, you know, just to the women out there, keep on, keep on fighting. Um, and I just wanted to say that, you know, my team and I will be working like hell every day, every moment in the most difficult part of our body, which is the brain, the most difficult to understand, until we make sure that the sound in your brain is not depressed, is not a sad song, but that your brains are healthy. We would love to do something in Saudi Arabia. So if you have connections with the Ministry of Health, please send them to me. And I hope your brains and your song in your brain will sound like this. Thank you.